If I pick up a gun, which I know is loaded, and then I point it at someone's head and I pull the trigger, I am responsible for that person's death. I cannot reasonably argue that it was not me, but the bullet, which killed the other person. I was fully informed, I knew it would happen, and then I set it up to happen. I am responsible for this evil that has taken place. I cannot blame the bullet, even though it was technically the bullet that did the job. If I throw a venomous snake into your bedroom at night while you're sleeping, knowing full well that the snake tends to bite people, I am responsible for your death. I cannot reasonably argue that it was not me, but the snake who chose to kill you. I was fully informed, I knew it would happen, and then I set it up to happen. I am responsible for this evil that has taken place. I cannot blame the snake, even though it was technically the snake that did the job. If I discover a murderous psychopath who is in prison because he likes to murder people, and I set this man free in a city, I am responsible, at least in part, for any murders that follow. I was fully informed, I knew it would happen, and then I set it up to happen. I cannot blame the murderous psychopath, at least not entirely, even though it was technically the psychopath who did the murdering. Of course, unlike the previous examples of the gun and the snake, one could reasonably argue that the murderer has free will and therefore the moral responsibility is mostly his, but I think we would all still agree that some of the responsibility is still mine, because I knew with reasonable certainty that it would happen, and then I set it up to happen. And finally, if I want to have a child with my wife, but genetic testing informs me that any child of mine is guaranteed to turn into a murderous psychopath, but then I have the child anyway, and then he grows up and murders someone, well, I was fully informed, I knew it would happen, and I set it up to happen. I have at least some share of the moral responsibility for that murder. Again, I think we would all agree with this, odd though this particular hypothetical may be. But for some reason, Christian apologists will insist that their own perfectly moral God does not obey this simple moral principle which they would otherwise agree with. For some reason, when it comes to the existence of sin and all the evils the apologists rail against, God is allowed to launder his evil actions through humans and take no responsibility for what is happening, or for what he knew humans would choose to make happen in the circumstances he created. When God creates a universe with humans, knowing full well that those humans are going to introduce sin and evil to the world, God is allowed, for some reason, to dust off his hands and say, no, no, I didn't create sin, it was my humans who created it. I didn't kill that man, the bullet did, the snake did, the psychopath did, the flawed humans did. God launders his evil actions through humans, and Christian apologists are falling over themselves to make excuses for him. Unless, of course, these apologists don't agree that the hypothetical actions I described carry any sort of moral responsibility. If Christian apologists are willing to bite that bullet, if they are willing to say that releasing a murderous psychopath from prison does not make you at all responsible for the subsequent murders, well then, my criticism doesn't apply. But I'm willing to bet that 99% of Christian apologists will not bite that bullet, and will instead have to bite this one. God is at least partially responsible, in a moral guilt sense, for the existence of sin and evil. This is a very unfortunate situation, because these apologists want to insist that God is a morally perfect being, that he hates sin more than anything else, and that sin is the worst thing in existence. I think this simply reveals the inadequacy of their understanding of human sin and depravity. They, they treat sin lightly, and they don't understand how deep our wrongdoing and depravity really, really is. Sin is way, way worse than we think. This is actually a theme in scripture, that sin is far worse than you think or I think. Right When Adam and Eve ate, their response and the things that they do demonstrate that they're aware there's something wrong, but they don't seem to realize how bad it is. And yet, God chose, indirectly, but chose, to bring sin into existence. He was fully informed, he knew it would happen, and he set it up to happen. So you know what? Maybe, just maybe, if the Christian God exists, then he isn't the perfect moral agent that many Christians claim. 
In fact, this would make sense of some of the more troubling Bible passages about God's relationship to sin and suffering. Paul says in Romans that God intentionally made some people sinful because they were useful to him that way, like how a potter uses a lump of clay. Indeed, a similar idea is expressed in Proverbs 16, which says that God made everything for its purpose, including the wicked. Paul also says in 2 Thessalonians that God sends people a powerful delusion to lock them into their sinful beliefs and prevent them from becoming righteous again. It's a very coherent picture. God intentionally makes evil things happen. He created the universe, knowing full well that evil would arise, and that the bullet would be fired and the snake would bite and the psychopath would murder. If God knew that sin would happen, and he set it up to happen, and the Bible says that God makes some of these kinds of things happen, it's a very coherent story. It seems entirely consistent to say that maybe God does some evil things. Maybe God is a complicated, morally flexible being, just like the humans he created. Maybe God is just a story we tell about ourselves.